Hello and welcome to a new episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr, where we talk about the art and culture of running a record label. And it's so exciting. I've been getting some emails and you can send me an email um, by emailing podcast at otherrecordlabels.com. But I've been getting these emails and DMs from people and it's so inspiring to hear about how many people are are encouraged and inspired to start a record label now. Um, And, you know, these are people who have been dreaming about doing it for years or months um, or even some stories of people who have have um, started a label uh, years ago and then, you know, start it back up again after some downtime. So it's such a cool thing. If that's some, if that's you, um, our website, otherrecordlabels.com, have some resources for people who are in the process of dreaming up a record label. In fact, we have a checklist and that is a bunch of things to look over and to make sure that you think about before starting a record label. And you can get that at otherrecordlabels.com slash checklist. Well, the, the best thing about this this show and getting to do the show is getting to talk to so many inspiring labels. And I, and I can't count how many labels have, um, you know, shared such in, encouraging things to help me keep going and to help our listeners keep going, but also even like practical tips of of hearing things and, and, and thinking, Oh, that's amazing. I'm going to implement that for my label. And so we have some incredible episodes on the horizon for you, including today with Grimalkin Records. Such an honor to talk with Nancy about this label and the history of this label and what they're doing. It's very exciting. In fact, in the episode, I referenced something, um, this kind of social media post that they do that was really important and how I came across their label and um, I am hoping and hopefully as you're listening to this a link for that social media post is in the description if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Music or Apple Podcasts it should be there in the description and if you're listening to this on YouTube it should be in the description as well so make sure you check that out while you're listening to this episode because you're going to find that resource very helpful and I think you're going to find this episode very helpful. Well, that's actually a great, a good place to start because I, I was listening to the podcast episode you did on your band camp about your label. And did I like, did I understand correctly that you were inspired to start the label as kind of like a response to the, the political landscape in America, like as a way to kind of, you know, um, start to make a difference in a, in a way. Is that true? Definitely in part. Okay. Um, yeah. It, um, I had, So I guess, so I moved here, I was actually living in Los Angeles. I'm not from there. I'm from Pennsylvania, but I was living in Los Angeles before I moved here. Um, And then I got here in 2008. And other than my partner, I really don't, didn't know anyone in this area. And I'm also living in a very rural area, like really remote. It's, it's about an hour plus South of Richmond. Okay. Okay. Um, and I was very isolated. I was actually moved here cause I was teaching at the schools. Um, so after several years here, I just wanted to like get myself more involved again in like grassroots organizing and music and see what was going on more. And so, you know, Richmond's like one of the, the closest cities, sure. I guess bigger than I'm kind of sandwiched between like the same distance, but actually further is Norfolk, the other direction. Okay. But like, um, that's like the military town, right? Um, I mean, I get, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> isn't there, isn't there like a big, like, yeah, uh, I've driven yes. through there before and there's just like always planes overhead and like aircraft carriers. Yeah. Yeah. And then, then I guess it's like the, 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 what is it? The ship, the shipyard and whatnot right. is out in Hampton, Newport News um, area. But okay. yeah, actually Hampton and Newport News is is actually probably even closer to me than say Richmond. But like I already kind of knew a f- like few people from just online social yeah. media. Um, so I basically um, started learning about like the grassroots, like the smaller mutual aid and grassroots organizations that were doing work in Richmond. Um, And just going out to shows and meeting people. And I volunteer with um, Virginia Anti-Violence Project. Okay. Um, And they're they're like a smaller, um, they do a lot of mutual aid work and and helping um, survivors of any kind of violence. Um, And also, but their focus is on LGBTQ and like marginalized folks. Um, Sure. And um, they do a lot of really great work. And that 
that whole, what they're doing and everything was like very, you know, spoke to me. Um, I have so, some things that happened to me in my past and whatnot. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, um, I've been volunteering with them for, for quite a while. And then a lot of people who do um, organizing work in Richmond are also musicians. So I started to meet people that way. Um, there's a lot of different groups in Richmond, like the um, Richmond um, Reproductive Freedom Project. Mm. Um, Nations Foundation is another one. And basically just um, learning about what's going on and meeting people and going to shows and building relationships. Um, so that was happening. And then like when the election happened, it definitely was like kind of a, I don't know, like a kick, kick in the butt or whatever. Yeah. Like I just kind of, if I felt like why, you know, we should, I, I could be doing more and just, um, basically it took several years of me just trying to like, is this something I can even do? How do I want to do it? I like did some like tape I, from with my music as a practice. I like did a like a tape, a couple tapes and like a lathe just to kind of see like what works involved and yeah, like how much yeah, money it costs yeah. and like is this something I can even do? Um, and then from there, like you know, just talking to people. You know, I don't know, it just turned, I would say 2018 was when we did our first, like, physical release. Um, and so were you always a, like, a label at that point? Like, when did you say, okay, Grimalkin Records is, like, official now? 2018. Okay. That was oh, okay. it. We kind of were, like, coming up with the name, and then um, um, I had thought about a, diff- you know, a few different names, and... Um, I just came across the word Grimalkin, I don't know, just Googling and brainstorming, I yeah, guess. Yeah, and, sure. um, and I was like, oh my God, that's, that's perfect. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's like a old archaic word and it, it def, it definitely means like cat, but it's also like a derogatory term. It's, okay. Um, for it, like a woman. <laughs> oh, really? Well, yeah. it's also it's also super original too. So like you don't really, I'm sure if you Google it, you probably don't, in the music sphere, you probably don't have a lot of competition with that name. <laughs> Definitely that's, not. Like, that's kind of, one of, <laughs> you know, one of the things I thought of was like friends, like friends records. And then I was like, someone was like, oh, there was already a friends records. I was like, of course there is. Of course there is. <laughs> There's everything. <laughs> that's just because awesome. it was like friends, you know, t- that we were, yeah. you know, or yeah. just some friends kind of like coming up with it but yeah so we i just we ended up going with i was like Ramalkin's perfect because it's it just fits in so many ways to me personally and also i feel like like you said it's also like this thing that i mean if if you don't know the word why would you it's not you so yeah. you'd have to yeah. like look you know and then when yeah. you find out yeah. the meeting you're kind of like oh <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know it's kind of funny yeah. Um, yeah so so 2018 and it was like this is it, I, I'm envisioning like this, like parallel, like community and collective and label at the same time, or, or do you see it as like, it's all integrated as one? Um, I guess it's integrated as one. I mean, definitely like we're a collective and the label, but sure. like, yeah, definitely we, we're definitely trying to move, move more and more towards like community support, you know, like helping each other, supporting each other in whatever ways that we can do that, helping our community community directly. But then also like, um, through grassroots organizing, because I mean, I know, like, I understand and think it's important that you support people directly in your community, but at the same time, I also do personally feel like it's important to support smaller, not large nonprofits, you know, because there's a lot of problems within nonprofits and whatnot. But but um, there are a lot of who already have like a structure in place and know who needs help and are making sure that happens for them. And I feel like it's really important to support that kind of work, too, because um, it's like going to be a combination of things if we want our world to be what we're hoping, you know, yeah, more like yeah, we're hoping yeah. it to be, yeah, we have to support individuals, but we also need to support those like smaller communities of people who are also doing mutual aid work and totally. or whatnot. Totally. So yeah. when, when you are, 
when you talk about a collective, how does that impact like who's on the roster and who's not? Like thinking in a more of a traditional sense, is anyone who is in the collective on the roster or are there like roster artists and then people who are just part of the community? Yeah, there are definitely like people who aren't officially in the, okay. <laughs> in the collective who are definitely our friends. And in some cases, it's just because we just haven't gotten around to it, if, okay. it make, if that makes sense. And then like, I don't know. Um, plus, um, I, I, don't, I don't know. We even have a few members who don't even make music per se. Oh, you know, they're just artists and organizers. And yeah, like Heaven, for example, does a lot of organizing work. Um but at, they they don't make music, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, so they might be the only person like that, actually. <laughs> but they're, I mean, they they are amazing and have done so much in Richmond for organizing work and sh- with benefit shows and booking shows yeah. and make you know lineups that are like really good you know, making sure good things are happening in Richmond. Um, they're involved with Great Dismal, which also is like, does that kind of work. Um, when I ask... They're collective. Uh, when thinking about like the more traditional like um, setup of a roster, how important is it for a label to be a community as opposed to just a group of autonomous artists? I think it's really important, but um, just because so much more can happen and all the cross collaborations that Mm -hmm. are happening too with Ingram Malkin. And, um, and like, there's all these other people too, who are kind of part of our, um, I would say part of our, are like part of the collective, even if it's not officially like on our website as these are our members. So, um, and we've been, Um, since the pandemic, we've actually been having meetings online, Hmm. um, try to work out our goals more. And we were looking into becoming either a nonprofit or an LLC. Oh, that's cool. And, um, that's really cool. Just this week I filed for LLC. Um, it's a multi multi multi-member LLC and we just need to, we're going to be meeting soon to work on our operating agreement. But like we decided not to go with nonprofit. The main reason is you can't keep any of your profits at the end of the year. I mean, we're not making any profits right now, but the idea is like, we're trying to build a fund too for mutual aid. And like, that would probably impair us, you know, like, sure. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I've always wondered why, you know, some labels wouldn't, um, because every label is either supporting an organization or more basically just supporting the artists on the label. And, and so I've always wondered why more labels don't go that route, but that that's interesting. Yeah. And you can still like raise money for organizations and do mutual aid as an LLC. So it just seemed like it was more freeing in terms of like what we can do. Right. Um, so, but we're moving that way. So that way we can actually set up like a legitimate bank account and also like, you know, really put it in place legally, like how we're run and led and that kind of thing. You I'm, know, I'm curious, do you have artists on the label who contribute in other ways than other than just making music? Like, do you, is that kind of an expectation in a way that there might be people who can provide all the artists on the label with some sort of support or services? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that is definitely the idea behind the collective is that we are all bringing something to the table, but if, you know, that could just even just be promoting on social media. Yeah. If oh, you don't totally. have, yeah. you know, cause yeah. that's huge. Like yeah. if you have a whole yeah, group of people doing that, that that's a lot, you yeah. know? So, yeah. but yeah, we have people who, um, mastering, mixing, oh, nice. graphic okay. design, artwork, nice. Um, Elizabeth Owens, Liz, um, they, they were one of the people f- with me from the very beginning. They did our logo. They, they, um, if you go on our, we have a website now. Um, okay. so if you check that out, we have a whole collective page and it actually says what everybody does. Oh, yeah. um, okay. And, um, it has a lot of information basically about us. And we're like, one of the things we're we're working towards is having a freelance page where we have all the different skills that all of us have, and then these are the basic rates, 
and then um, you can then reach out to them directly and maybe we have it like linked up with their portfolio or their website or they could actually do it through Grimalkin directly. So for example, like if I did the work, obviously I would be going to the label. If somebody wanted to donate some of what they made, they could, it wouldn't be something we are requiring. Cause it's, again, it's, we're trying to build like support for each other so that people, we're just really hoping we can generate the kind of like work too, that people want to do, you mm -hmm. know, and hopefully, so that's one of the things we're, we're working towards right now too. After we get this LLC paperwork stuff yeah. <laughs> out of the way. Uh, when, when we're talking about community, um, you know, a lot of when you think of community, you think of things at a local level and you think of getting together in shows. How has um, COVID treated things and, and how have you kind of responded to the pandemic with, you know, live shows being put on hiatus and stuff? How has that affected you guys? Yeah. So it, I guess it's two things on a personal level. I was laid off. Um, that was oh. a big hit. I was laid off on March 31st. Wow. So on a, on a personal level, it was a big hit because my job was what was mainly funding the label. Yeah. I'm getting unemployment yeah. right now, but like, yeah, so it's just kind of like, that was worrisome for me. I'm still a little like concerned, but I'm hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, yeah. And then, um, so that's, that was, that's like a, the pers a personal thing. But right. then, um, in terms of shows yeah i mean we had to cancel several shows which was a bummer there yeah. was going to be a show in april that was me mariah who's woven in who's a one of our members and um burko lover burko and um and they um they both live in baltimore mm. um so looking forward to that and then that got canceled obviously uh, yeah but um we what we did was we just kind of moved to the online thing and um right now um, we're collaborating with Judy Hung's label, which is Quiet Ear Records. Okay. And we're okay. having a Wednesday. It's It's been happening since mid-May. Um, and it's Grimier Wednesdays. <laughs> 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 and, um, yeah, it's a really good name for it. And um, <laughs> basically it's like a week... Uh, a weekly series where we have um, artists and of all kinds of artists on. So you, it's like a two part show um, every Wednesday night at seven thirty East Eastern time. Um, but it's basically like one an inter the first half is just someone being interviewed. And then the second half is an interview plus a performance. Okay. Um, we've been doing that. That is and really that's cool. And we're raising money for Virginia anti-violence projects with the series. So that's really cool. Um, and that, sorry, that's on Instagram or how, how are you broadcasting that? So that's actually, we're doing it on zoom, Oh, okay. but can, I think you can view in with Twitch and some other ways. I'm, I'm okay. not the best okay. tech person yeah. here, so I'm <laughs> kind of going for going in on zoom, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, yeah, I can, um, I have, I've recently just tweeted about it and yeah, on Instagram, sure. we have a show tonight, you know, okay, cool. but, um, yeah, we have Manny Lemus on from Citrus oh, nice. City oh, yeah. Records. Yeah. 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 Oh, and, great. um, great. yeah, yeah. And Shermishta, um, is on and, and they're a, um, they're a collective member of ours and they're, they're doing the interview performing part tonight. Very um, cool. yeah. So we're, that's, we're excited. That, that's awesome. Uh, I, um, let's talk about the artists. Like, how do you respond to artist submissions? Uh, like when you, when are you searching for new artists? How do you decide to bring into this collective? I mean, um, it, in a way it kind of sounds like it's open, but at the same time, like that might not be realistic. So how, how does that work? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so w let me, I, would you, would it be okay if I told you one more thing about a, an online show? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. I'm sorry. No. Just because it's just recent too. It's um we're also and it, I don't know um we're having a show on uh, July 25th online. Um I th I'm not sh I think you're I don't remember now for sure if it's like going to be on Instagram and Facebook, but I think it is. But okay. I think it's also Zoom. There's going to be an art auction, I believe, a few days before. And, um, then the show is on Saturday afternoon on July 25th. Okay. Backwash is going to be on the show. Cool. Woven cool. in, um, hunting dog. Um, and they're all, 
they're all part of the collective. And then um, Machine Girl, is a, uh, which is a DJ. Um, and it's to raise money for um, he- Heaven has a lot of student debt. And so we're, the, sh- the show is to help them kind of like get a little bit out of their that's awesome, awesome. That yeah great. yeah that's really cool just wanted to share that just because that's kind of like you know fits into with what we're what we're about and yeah. everything yeah no yeah. that's great thank you yeah so yeah. artists i'm kind of curious about that and, and how that kind of submission process works yeah so i guess initially um you know it was just like my, you know, my friends. And, and so if you look at the collective page, you'll see there's a lot of people with Richmond. Um, I even have it for my name, Richmond, just because, you know, I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um, but anyway, (laughs) like, um, Armand's from Norfolk. And then a lot of the people that ended up, we ended up hearing about, like came through, other people. Um, I also met several people that are in the collective on Twitter through Twitter, actually. Right. Interesting. Like backwash, for example. Um, I, don't know, I think I was like following her or something. And mm-hmm. at some point she followed me back and I was a fan already. <laughs> and I just figured what the heck, I'm just going to go for it and yeah. ask yeah. her if she's interested in this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And she was, and I was like, Oh shoot. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was really cool. And, um, So that happened a few times and then just like with different people or like I met Kate can wait, um, Molly Kate from Twitter and, um, like we both liked each other's music. Uh, I, I probably with all the people in the collective, I, our music is probably the most similar maybe. Um, um, but anyway, and then I met Mabel through, through her and, um, I don't know. I met Burko from doing the compilations I told you about earlier beforehand. Right. Um, and are you open to like new artists from outside of the Richmond area? Like who maybe couldn't contribute in the same way to the collective? Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, like backwash is in Canada. So is Oh, cool. Um, Quentin's in Toronto. Um, Mariah and Burko are in Baltimore. Mabel is in Philly. Um, so is Savan. Um, and we have an, our newest member, um, Rafa, Rafael. Um, they're in they're in Brazil. Um, and uh, yeah, and Molly Kate's in Puerto Rico. Oh, that's um, awesome. So I yeah, guess, I mean, like, everyone a- can still contribute because most things are done online anyway. <laughs> Yeah. And then as far as like submissions go, we have had an uptick in that. Just like, I'd say since the pandemic, I don't know. We, okay. It seems like Grimalkin's actually flourished a little. Like That's this cool. Time. That's good to hear. I don't know why exactly, but, um, uh, I know also I've had a lot more time on my hands too, to put in. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, that's so an it was upside, pretty much all I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I feel like it is a little bit of a blessing in disguise being laid off because I don't know if I really would have thought about pushing us towards LLC and, right. and stuff like that either. But um, as far as like getting submissions from people, we totally don't know. Yeah. We're, we tend to more have more, releases probably by us and our friends and like people right. who know each other friends through, but yeah, yeah. we're yeah. open to like people we don't know. Um, we just kind of want to know a little bit more though. Like, why do you, why did you reach out to us? Why do you want to be a part of, of what we're mm-hmm. doing? You don't have to be a member though to release with us at all. Right. Um, and like what we're doing now is, when we get submissions and I'm sending them out to the group of people in the collective who want to be a part of that process, like determining. Oh, very cool. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. So we're doing that. Um, that way, you know, again, like I get stuff where I hear it and I'm just like, Oh shoot, this is awesome. You know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, you know, and, and that's kind of how it's been. But then like now I'm trying to make it more like, you know, let's make a decision together, especially when it's someone we, none of us really know, you know, we don't know the person. Um, let's all decide together if this, that's a really great idea. I've never, I've never heard of that. I know, I know a label that's a husband and wife duo and they, 
have to kind of equally agree on. Um, but aside from that, I've never heard of like sending it, do it, sending it to the artists and having the artists kind of speak to the A&R side of things. I think that's a genius idea. I love it. Oh, cool. Yeah. I, I feel like it just make, makes more, much more sense with what we're trying to do collectively. Sure. And, um, and again, pushing it a little bit away from like me making decisions, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. that's um, great. You know, because I really didn't want it to be, of course, initially it had to be that way. But as we grow more, I'm trying to be more led by other people. Sure. Well, then, if, well, then if the album is a flop, you can blame them. <laughs> no, <laughs> hey, but you no album's a flop. Do you know, it's in my opinion, no album's a flop because I know, we're not. Yeah, I know you're joking, <laughs> but I, but I mean, like, I know, like, there is all this pressure. I'm sure that artists feel like, oh God, I hope you know my album does well. They yeah. want, of yeah. course, everybody wants their own album to go well. But like, if we if we put it out, it's because we believe in it. We think it's totally. awesome, and like your follower count or like your previous whatever, like that stuff just like doesn't mean yeah, anything totally, to, totally. to me personally, or to, I don't think to anybody in the collective. You know, I think if I was an artist and and a a, a label, no matter the size, agreed to put my record out, uh, that would be a huge win in of itself just having somebody else believe in your music that's a huge win yeah yeah and it's so like different to like the way the music scene currently works you know it's like that's really what we're we're just trying to do things differently so we're probably going to make a lot of mistakes i know i've made a lot of mistakes like <laughs> learn, yeah. i've learned a lot of things how to do things better just from making mistakes but like because we're i feel like a lot of the stuff we're doing maybe hasn't quite been done so it's like you know you kind of try something and see if it if it makes sense sure. and then yeah we just yeah. keep evolving i guess you know we've we've changed a lot since i you know i started it in 2008 and now it's like this whole other thing, like it's, I feel like it's really become what I had hoped it to be and more, mm, you know, like beyond great. what I had oh, wow. even thought wow. initially, like, you know, like it's evolved to this place and it's that I feel like is really, it's just really exciting. That's awesome. I came across your label because of someone shared in our label, in our label Facebook group, the, these like helpful tips that you were, you had shared on Instagram, which is like white tips for white folks in DIY music. And it was great. Like, can you tell me about the, this and, and tell me about its Genesis? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, um, you know, with everything that's going on right now, it's like all these, all these, all these people in music, like have have this, like, Oh, we need to pay attention more to what, black people are, are mm -hmm. doing. Right. And, you know, and like, um, and part of my issue with like what was going on when I started things was that everything was so like, like gate, so much gatekeeping and right. so many All white right. folks in, in positions of the gatekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and like, I just, that was part of like why I wanted to make start Grimalkin in the first place was like make something that was completely different um and not be that way mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess yeah, yeah. and so um yeah and I guess so it, it, when everything was like first started happening and you saw all these you know music labels and whatnot scrambling <laughs> <laughs> you know and i mean and, and i myself had so much frustration over a few different people within the i would say sure. within the diy music who had like all white labels pretty much right. um and also like blogs or music sites where like they totally like ignored me right. <laughs> when i'd email them and stuff and yeah. like then I'd look at their blog and be like, oh, well, whatever. It's a sea of white faces. So sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just like, now, nah, you know what? We're about trying to do, we're going to create our own, you know, our own thing and focus on the folks who want to support us. And then all this stuff happened um, and, you know, people are scrambling. So we just felt like, like it would make sense for us to 
make a statement and then have tips. So the statement was put together by several of the black folks in the collective. Okay, so the great. initial, the, the first initial statement, um, and, uh, of course, and we paid them for their time, um, to do that. Amazing. And then the tips were ba- basically the steps that I personally took, like as a white person, just trying to like start, think about starting yeah, something yeah. like this. Um, because, you know, I quickly started realizing like before anything even started with this label that like building trust and building relationships and giving yourself sincerely like to helping others is like really important. And like, you, you can't just go in and expect people to like share their music with you or trust you, especially if you're white. Um, if you, if you haven't made a commitment and effort to like, get to know folks and what they want, what they need totally. and like, and give your time. And so like, you know, just doing that work and doing some benefit shows and whatnot. We, we were, I, uh, several of us in the collective before we were really officially a collective, you know, yeah. um, yeah. we're yeah. doing stuff like that and, um, just kind of like building relationships and, and friendships. And then like from there, um, you know, you know, learn, learning about supporting people, learning about what's going on, learning about what they need. And so we just felt like, you know, it's not like everybody has to do things the way we did, but like, if you're really sincere about making real change within the music community, like, I feel like they are, that's a very connected thing to like, you know, with, you have to, do that kind of work, especially well, if you're well, white. If that's you what ask I, me. absolutely. That's what I loved about these these tips, and, because they were so practical and they were actually like action steps. They weren't just um, philosophies that you need to uh, hold or mindsets that you need to embrace. It was like actually things that you should go out and do, not just in the season, but like every day for the rest yes. of your life. And I loved, I loved that. And I found that so interesting and what, and, and just real quick, I just want to say to our listeners, um, I will try to include a link to this, um, so that while I'm talking in the description, you can get, I'll link to this Instagram post, but it's also available at Grimalkin. That's G R I M A L K I N dot records on Instagram. And you can scroll down and find this as we're talking about it. But a lot of the things that you, you had mentioned or, or that the folks had written, on these tips were things that you do on a local level, which surprised me because so much of my work in the music industry is with a computer and through the internet with people like hands off. But these tips were really rooted in the local community. Why, why is that so important? Do you think? I mean, I feel like that's where change has to happen. You have to change within yourself and you need, that needs to go into your, your local community with the people you know and finding those folks who are already doing work like that and supporting them and finding out what, what they need and what they want, what's going to help them. How can you serve what's already going on? Mm. And that's how it's going to branch out. It's not going to happen from like top down. It's not going to happen from, from tweets. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not. Um, I, I, there's things like building friendships over time with, with the grassroots organizations, booking shows featuring a majority of of marginalized individuals, uh, volunteering your time for some of these organizations. Uh, I, I thought that was just really interesting of like, these things are not things that you can do, um, go out and do right now. But the, instead, these are things that you can do like for a long period of time. It's like a time investment in and start to build relationships. I found that really inspiring. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, that's what, I mean, that's what inspired, that's what inspires me to keep going too, because I do feel like it is like a, um, like it fuels itself, you know, once you sure. really sure. invest yourself, you know, you might think of it from the outside. If you haven't done that stuff, well, I don't have the time or it's a lot of work and that's a lot of energy, but like, that's, that's what it takes to make real change. And if you get yourself involved in that, it's so, it's so rewarding and inspiring in itself. Like to me, it's like its own, it's its own like motivator for me. Yeah. 
especially when you see things happen and when you collaborating with other people and it's just, it's really just a beautiful thing. And, um, I feel like that's, that's the only way we're, we're ever going to have, I, I'm, we hope. I, yeah, I agree. I, I'm sold on it. And, and, and I hope that people hold me accountable to after COVID is over to, to kind of go out there and, and to start to build those relationships. But what right now, what can we do with our web presence to promote inclusivity? Because especially during COVID, a lot of us are living online and our, a lot of our communities, communities are existing solely online. Is, is there ways that we can use the internet? And, and I don't mean like in an armchair kind of way, but to, to promote inclusivity without appearing performative or, or disingenuous. Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of a lot of the way Grimalkin was started too was doing that that stuff online too, not just locally. So, mm. although we were doing a lot of organizing work in Richmond, I was also like reaching out to folks online. Mm. You know, like like Backwash and Quentin and Mabel. I mean, lo- they're not people yeah, who live yeah. in my yeah. community. You're able. I mean, my opinion. I know people. It, I know it's not the same as in real life, but like. I, I hold those friendships and connections with people just they're just as valuable to me or like a value yeah. or of or like importance to me um, than the folks I know in real life personally. Um, so I think you can do that work just through sincere connections because I feel like I've used Twitter that way. That's why it's the only social media platform that I I guess like sure. more than hate, yeah. yeah. But I do yeah. hate all necessity. social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. But um, I really feel like I have made a lot of connections with, and that's something else too that we've encouraged people with the um, you know, like you we were asking about submissions and whatnot from people who are outside us. Like we we really would like to encourage you getting to know us and us getting to know you. Um, so like you know you can um you know, if you're interested in what we're doing, reaching out, but like in, in more, you know, over time and sincere ways on, you know, even if it's sharing what we're doing, Mm -hmm. maybe like trying to have a a real conversation with someone over the internet, um, you know, like that takes time. Like, I feel like, so I do feel like a lot of, yeah, those tips didn't really talk about that stuff, I guess, but, um, there's definitely that, that was definitely a huge part too of how Grimalkin has evolved over time. Um, so I do think you can do that. And I mean, as far as benefit shows and, and what, what not, I mean, you can do those things online. And one of the nice things about it is it's, 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 it's accessible to people who, who may not be able to go to shows normally, Sure. Um, whether it's because of a disability or that's right. Um, like in my situation, I'm traveling over an hour <laughs> just to go to a show or play a show. So it is kind of nice to have like, you know, a, a, I almost feel like even when we're able to have shows again in real life, cause it, nothing's going to replace that, but, yeah. um, it would be, I would like to see if there was still some, some sort of online stuff or shows still continuing or a way for venues to try to plug I totally agree yeah plug and that I mean, in I mean, yeah yeah I think it would it's very inclusive to to offer to continue to offer a, a live streaming component I think yeah yeah it'd be great if like and I don't I don't feel like it would be that difficult we've been doing it so I feel like people yeah we've all we've all learned how to live stream <laughs> yeah so I, I feel like people now can then take that and that would be a really great way to be more accessible to folks who who can't make shows for Whatever reasons, even if it's like so- social anxiety and for sure. overstimulation Absolutely. from too many people, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. Um, here's a. I want to ask you a question. I want to be delicate with this, but here's an issue I found with signing artists from marginalized groups. They're they're harder to find. They're harder to find than than white guys with guitars, and obviously. That's a systematic problem that goes back into a a lack of social acceptance and cultural norms and discrimination in music stores and unevolved parents and like a lack of access to instruments and role models. Like 
I, th- I believe that the, the, the roots of this problem go back very deep, but it means that today 90% of the submissions that I receive are going to look and sound a lot like me. A- a- am I just not looking hard enough or how do you overcome this history of inequality when you're trying to bring about equality? Oh yeah. That's, that's, that's just, that's the big question, but <laughs> yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> I guess I push back a little bit on the idea that, that, that it's harder to find. Okay. Um, okay. I, I get, and that's just because I didn't have, I didn't have any problem. <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's fair. And I'll tell yeah, you, that's fair. I didn't have any problem because maybe it's because I did do a bunch of work before I really was like, Hey, you know, do you, we're doing this. Do you want to be a part of it? You know, like. I don't know if that's why, um, maybe that's partly why, cause I, I was going out there and trying to f- discover stuff myself. I wasn't waiting for stuff to come to me. Sure. That's um, fair. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of labels, um, they just wait for people to come to them. And yeah. so who's the loudest, you oh, know what I'm yeah. saying? Like yeah, who yeah. feels the most entitled? It's yes. going to be white folks. It's going to be maybe mostly white men, white cis men, um, that, you know, like, cause it's a good point. I don't know. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. Um, I feel like labels have to do a better job on themselves. Like their whole structures and everything is just, I think it's really complicated. It's probably even beyond my, my ability to quite understand (laughs) everything. Cause I'm not in a, I never worked for a label or anything, but from what I see, it like goes down to like, their staff, like who they have doing A and R, who good point. You know, um, like money is another thing. Like that's a huge a huge thing that's <laughs> a problem. Um How so? which is a How stick so? what do you mean? Which is just a sticking point with me. Well just like the, uh, not being transparent about Oh yes, money. that was one of the things on the point. Yeah, okay. Not being transparent about it, not not making sure people know exactly what's going to happen. Just labels like owning people's music and masters and um, all that kind of stuff. And then, I mean, definitely like there's, you know, you mentioned maybe like economic reasons why people might not have, have, have gotten their name out there or had the chance to try, but like, there's definitely, you know, organizations too, and smaller groups out there who are trying to change that kind of stuff too. And you could support them. Like, I don't know, like girls rock, for example, or, um, you know, I'm not sure. I mean, I I think like definitely no quick fix or you're right or any answer, but I feel like if labels did more of the work and either, well, changing how they're running things completely, who's, who's running things, who's making decisions. Um, but then also just making more of an effort. Like there's tons of people out there, um, black and indigenous and people of color who are making all kinds of music, but like, you don't hear about it, like you said, but I just don't think people are making enough effort to like find those folks. And then why would they trust anybody or even want to come to a label if sure. they see if they see your label is like all these white folks, why would they even bother? Good you know, point. so yeah, they're not going to come to you. Yeah. Like, so if yeah. you really want to make a change, you have to change the way you're running things and how you're doing things and how you're finding those folks and making relationships with them, though, because you know, it, like I saw somewhere, I can't remember who it was. I think it was Mint Green. Um, they had like had a post about how they don't really want to be somebody's like first right yes uh, act I see you know saying yeah no on their roster like that's kind of like yeah Yeah. and yeah of course I I don't too yeah yeah and I don't blame them you know like why would you why would you want to be and that just goes to the whole point of like you got to be you got to be sincere and building trust on a much deeper personal level for your anything good to happen or for any change to happen, you're not going to be able to just slap a bandaid over it or yeah. like get sign a few bands with black folks and think you're done for the day. You know, like yeah. that's, that's, that's like, no, that's a really good point. I really appreciate that. I think that that is a really good point. I mean, uh, um, uh, this is really interesting and I want to, 
I kind of want to take some time uh, afterwards and, and, and possibly in another episode to kind of go over these um, these tips and read them aloud. But l- let's talk about, um, I want to talk about like kind of fundraising and sustainability a little bit. Um, I, I know that like profit and revenue isn't easy for a, a label whose who's primary focus is, you know, in the DIY community and, and marginalized artists. But at the same time, it would be wonderful if somehow, someday, all of our artists could earn a living regardless of, of their genre or their ethnicity. Do you have a hope for the future when it comes to artist sustainability? Yeah, I mean, de- definitely that would be the dream. Um, uh I mean, I guess part of what we're part of what we're trying to do is just like take little little baby steps, I guess, towards that. And maybe it's not going to happen in my lifetime. But I'm also hoping that Grimalkin becomes this thing that, like, we're like this, you know, big queer family. And I'm hoping <laughs> that when I pass on, it's going to continue with yeah. my family. Like, I'm sure. really hoping that's what happens. And yeah. like, so maybe somewhere down the line. And so like one thing, like I mentioned, like with the freelance page, right? So that would be one step towards helping people, you know, maybe as we grow, you know, you'll know like, oh, these are all these trusted people who do this work and we can pay them, you know, to do these things we need um, and hopefully generate the kinds of things that they um, want to do. Um, I mean, yeah, within our current... Um, system, you know, with cap- capitalism, obviously, like money is isn't going away anytime <laughs> soon, <laughs> or right. the structure of that isn't going away anytime soon. So, I guess um, that's like one way we're tra- hoping to like help folks like get paid. Um, we're tr- also trying to do that internally, like so, like we're we're trying to come up with like different rates where that wouldn't be as high as we maybe we charge a stranger coming to us where we can also support each other internally, like for work that we're doing. Yeah. That's a great idea. We're trying to do that. And, um, and also like, yeah, we're, you know, as far as our releases go, it's generally like the digital only sales proceeds go all to the artists, unless the artist wants to donate them for whatever reason. So there'll be a certain situations where, either all of it or part of it will go to a grassroots org or some mutual aid cause. Um, Like Backwash has been super generous. Like she's been allowing us to use that money for a mutual aid fund for um, both her albums right now. Um, In the past, DVNC was like going to different orgs and then to her for a little bit. Um, And then like, yeah, so that's really cool. My music obviously goes to the label. <laughs> I'm not, but um, Backwash is like, you know, like she's, she's our, obviously like our biggest artist as far as like, you know, people are pretty much steadily at some point buying her albums. Oh, that's awesome. And she was featured on Bandcamp recently too, wasn't she? Yes. Yes. Yeah, she's been getting a lot of love and attention, which is extremely well deserved. That's great. And she's a very, very sweet person too and like and she's canadian that's the most important thing (laughs) yeah well she well i get yeah by choice she's canadian (laughs) okay yeah yeah because she's from she's from zambia but um right 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 yeah yeah but uh yeah yeah so yeah she's in montreal i believe now yeah that's what Um, it says on your website that's cool yeah um was I, there was, sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> we were talking about like the artists, like donating their, um, Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So stuff. then the yeah. tape, the tapes, our tapes are generally the proceeds go to, um, like a grassroots or mutual aid org that the artist chooses that's local to them usually. So okay. that's, that's the really deal cool. is with that. And then the lace kind of like just go back into the label, which is pretty much, we, we really don't make anything from them. They basically, if we sell them all, we kind of like break even kind of thing. Sure. Um, and then as far as like, we're really hoping and what we're really hoping to build is our subscribers, our monthly subscribers on Bandcamp and Patreon, because like, that's how we're going to be able to like sustain and build a fund. And I'm really hoping to eventually be able to just, focus on this as my job. Like, so I could just like, if I could just pay my bills and get by, um, 
that would be great. And that's not going to happen unless we had support. Um, cause right now it's like, there's been such an uptick that the workload involved at this point now, since the pandemic happened to, it's really increased. It's probably like tripled that in terms of like work. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. So it's like, it's a lot though. So like if I was going back to work again, the, the job I had before that I was laid off, there's no way I'd be able to keep up with everything either. Right. So that's right. kind of partly why we're also kind of pushing to make it be a legit business too, is like an LLC um, and, and whatnot. Um, and I don't, uh, another thing we're, we're doing is like, we're, so physical releases, you know, I know a lot of people just stream and they don't buy stuff anymore, but I personally feel, and I know other people in the collective feel that it's really important to have like a physical sure, sure. documentation of yeah. artists' yeah. work. And, um, I have been saving a whole, like one set of copies that I'm hoping one day we'll be able to like donate to like a, like a queer library or museum. Oh, great. That's awesome. Yeah, that is really would, cool. It would be really amazing. Um, I don't know where. Or <laughs> yeah, no, what it's good to exactly. plan for that. Yeah, but I've definitely been keeping that aside as something that, like, so hopefully we really make some sort of mark in terms of yeah, like absolutely things that are happening that are important that I feel like the music we're doing is important. Well, thank you so much for doing this and congratulations on your label and congratulations on the uptick from COVID. I'm, I'm glad to hear that that's happening. Hopefully that's happening for other labels too. And thank you for putting together this uh, becoming more inclusive thing. I want to share this with our listeners and I think it's it's such a great thing. I, re I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to, to um, talk to me and highlight what Grimalkin's doing. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for listening. Again, um, to if you wanted to um, see what we were talking about about that the social media post about those eight steps of, of inclusivity, I'm going to do a um, I'm going to do a special episode on it next week where I highlight those and read those out loud. So make sure you tune in for that. Um, but if you want to read them ahead of time, you can get it in the description below. Thank you so much for being a listener, and please stay in touch.